Alrighty, welcome back guys. We are in the middle of stage three, week number two in the Overwatch League. We had some nice matches the last couple days. Uh, massive upset, as you can see, Houston Outlaws coming off of a nine game losing streak. Upset the San Francisco Shock, the best team in the league. That was a crazy match. Um, if you have not watched it, I would very highly recommend that you do so. Um, I will be making, I will probably be doing a live analysis or a, a full match analysis. Um, of course, it'll be live um, of the Houston Outlaws San Francisco Shock match because it was extremely interesting. And we got to see a lot of the the things that can really work against goats in this meta. Um, and I think I would like also like to make a video about um, the the meta itself right now because it is different than it was in stage two and particularly stage one. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, Houston then followed up. They won two matches in a row. They've thrown themselves right in the back, right in back of the thick of it. For the um, play-in, um, we had teams like Vancouver, New York, uh, Gladiators take care of business. Chundu pulled off a nice upset over the Dallas Fuel. Um, so, yeah, had some interesting games. I mean, th the week started out with two three twos, so it was a good week. Only one 4-0. Um, so, without further ado, we're going to be moving into the matches for today and for tomorrow. Again, I, I'm probably, yeah, I'm even more excited for most of these than, um, than the matches the last couple days, and those were really good. So, starting off, we're going to get into Washington Hanjo Spark matchup. Looking at maps, they got Ilios, Paris, Hollywood, and then Watchpoint Gibraltar. So, Washington came out and they lost their first matchup. Um, they fell to the Dallas Fuel, um, this is their second match of the stage, Hanjo's coming off of a loss to the, uh, Vancouver Titans, where that's gotta be a frustrating one for them, because it really looked like they were gonna be able to send it to a, at least a fifth map, um, and they weren't able to pull it out on, um, on Havana, so... I think that that's going to be frustrating. I know if I was on that team or in that uh, in that staff, I would be um, I'd be pretty um, sad that we couldn't at least push it to a fifth map because you never know. Maybe they could have pulled it out on a fifth map. Um, Vancouver still has yet to be beaten in the regular season, so I'm sure every team that plays them is really trying to be the first. Um, but looking at this matchup, Washington has honestly in the past couple of weeks disappointed me. Um, I have been praising like the additions when it comes to Arc and then Sleepy. Um, I was like, these are these are two big like bonuses, um, but they haven't looked too much better. Um, they look semi-competitive on a map or two, and then kind of get blown out on the other couple maps in most of their series. So I do not have the most faith in them right now. Um, like I said, I'm still a little bullish on, on the Spark. Um, a lot of people have them towards top 5 in power rankings, and I don't buy that quite yet. I think they're in top 10. Um, but they do still have some glaring issues. Um, mostly, in my eyes, it's like focus fire and quick shot calling. Because a lot of times when they have opportunities, they're a little slow to capitalize on them. And that, I mean, that is that is something that they need to... Um, watch out for because especially in goats meta you really need to be able to jump on any quick mistake any um, opening they've lost they've just lost too many fights where they where they're up a person especially against the good teams like Vancouver so in the end here looking at this map pool I'm gonna say it's a 3-0 for Han Joe I think justice probably probably full holds or at least um, limits to one cap on Paris They've looked, their defense especially has looked good on that map, but I don't think they'll be able to generate a good enough attack against the Spark to take that map. I think that one will end up being a draw. And otherwise, I see Spark taking the rest of these. Um, map 1 is the most crucial one. Spark have struggled probably the most on control maps, and that's been Washington's 
um, one of their stronger points the last couple of weeks. So it's really important for Washington to take that first map. If they don't take map one, I think it just spirals from there, and they'll be lucky to finish with an 0-3. Um, but yeah, I mean, Washington, it's still there. 7-10 and 10 is the record of pretty much all the teams from like 11 to 15-ish in the standings. Um, and remember, um, teams seven, teams one through six are automatically in the playoffs. And then seven through twelve will get into a play-in tournament where they, where they um, decide who gets the last two spots in the in the overall playoffs. Thirteen through twenty are eliminated at the end of stage four, and they have no chance of making the playoffs. Their seasons will be over. So Washington still have a slightly outside shot. They're sitting at two and thirteen, but they need an upset against the Spark here. They got a channel here in Houston. You got to believe and take a match against a team that is very good, but also vulnerable in several um, cases. So hopefully Washington puts up at least a good fight in that one um, because they do have the ability. Um, they just need to kind of put it all together. But like I said, I'm taking Hanjo to win this one. I don't think it happens today. Next, we got another nice one, Seoul Dynasty against Atlanta Reign. So the Reign um, have really kind of struggled to open up this stage, but they've played against extremely good teams in the Titans, the Shock, and the Dragons. So, what do they do? What can they do to kind of get themselves over the hump? Because they lost in five to the um, to the Shock. They lost in five to the Dragons yesterday. They lost three to one to Vancouver. So they haven't been blown out. They've been in these matches. They just haven't really been able to pull them out um, they're playing against another really good team in Seoul, and this one, I was looking at like the numbers, I was looking at how they matched up, and most of the numbers point to Seoul with a small advantage, um, but I'm going to go on a gut feeling here, and I'm going to say Atlanta wins this one in five. They've been so close the last three, they've shown that they can play against the this upper level of teams, they really need a win here, because like I said, there's a ton of teams that are sitting at that 7 and 10 right now. Um, so it's crucial for them to get a at least a couple of wins in this stage here. And like I said, Atlanta has looked really good. They looked, they've looked maybe the best they've they have all season. Maybe towards the end of stage, like in the middle slash end of stage one, they looked really good. Like they were finally hitting their stride. Stage two, they looked like they were trying to like get it back with putting in new players like Baby Bay. And now they look like they're at full strength. Daco is a monster. Pokemon has been really solid. Um, I still like their back line. So I'm going to say Atlanta can clutch this one out, and they take it 3-2. to two. Um, But yeah, this should be one of the most competitive matches, whoever wins it, of the week. And we got Dallas taking on Vancouver. So a couple times these two teams have played. It has not gone well for Dallas. Dallas is also coming off of a... Uh, a rough loss. That's kind of the only way I can say it. It, it was pretty rough. Um, and then there's Vancouver, 17-0. Looking at maps, they got Elios, Volskaya, Eichenwald, and then Dorado. So, this match pretty much screams Vancouver. Um, there are a couple things, because like, it's hard to beat a good team a lot of times in a row. Um, and Dallas is still a good team. But Vancouver, I mean, Vancouver is Vancouver, you know? So it's going to be really tough for Dallas. Um, the one thing I will say for Dallas is they have generally been really good at bouncing back after a loss. They've been really resilient this season. I think it's um, I think it's a nod to the kind of their mentality as well as their coaching. Um, but I don't really see them winning this one. Um, AKM has been very disappointing to me on Sombra. Um, I think that RCK was better. Um, some of some of these EMPs that I've been seeing from AKM the last couple matches are just complete and total head scratchers. Um, Dallas is one and two this stage, so they really need this. They really need this one. Um, I think this one has all the like the makings for like an, an upset by Dallas, but I don't see it happening. The best chance Dallas has is if Vancouver runs their a bunch of Sombra instead of. Um, Instead of Somansu on Zarya, 
and having uh, Janu on Diva. They were running Janu on the uh, Zarya and then Somansu on the Sombra, and it looked pretty terrible. <laughs> Somansu looked like he was just trying to start to learn how to play Sombra. Um, so if Dallas could really clean up their Sombra goats and just hit them hard, then they got a chance. But I don't think it's happening. Um, Dallas had a really tough schedule because they're playing Chundu, then Vancouver, and then Chundu again. And that's a really weird turn because it's two completely different styles of team. Um, so maybe Dallas was just preparing a lot more for Vancouver, and that's why they didn't play well against Chundu, and they're going to come on and play really well. But I can't bring myself to pick them. I think Dallas takes either map one or two is where I would say it's most vulnerable. Probably Elios more than Volskaya. But I'm going to take Vancouver 3-1. to one. The final match of Saturday, we got the Guangzhou Charge taking on LA Valiant. So, um, again, super important match for both teams. Um, Guangzhou sitting at six and ten. Valiant are sitting at four and twelve. Uh, Valiant actually do have a better map differential though than the Charge because the Charge had their streak where they were just getting four out every single game. Um, so this is an interesting series because these are two teams that are, like I said, out of the playoffs right now. But I think they either team could make a push. Um, we got Elios, Horizon Lunar Colony, Numbani, and then Havana. So I think this is a good map pool for Guangzhou, particularly the last two. Um, Numbani, we saw some really nice performances from the charge on there. Um, I think map two definitely goes to Valiant, um, for Horizon, but I think map one is going to probably be the most interesting. Um, we've seen, uh, at least on a couple of the maps on ruins, generally you'll see more of like goats, but, um, you do see some DPS variations on, uh, well and lighthouse. So. We'll see what both these teams come out with, because um, Valiant have been playing a bit more standard. Um, the Charge are g generally switch it up a little bit more, but I am going to go with the Valiant here. I think that they've been playing better overall their last couple of matches. I think that Guangzhou is just still way too inconsistent for my liking. Um, and well, I think that map 3 is really good for them. Map 4 is kind of a toss-up because, I mean, it's a new map. Both the teams haven't played on it um, much, if at all, besides in practice. So I'm going to take the Valiant here. I'm going to say 3-1 with pretty much all the maps being close. But I could definitely see this one going to a fifth map. Um, and I think if it gets to five, it's a toss-up. You know, it's whatever, whatever team performs better. But right now, like I said, I trust Valiant a little bit more to be consistent. And consistency uh, wins the day here because they're both at very similar skill levels and going on to Sunday this is a really interesting one as well San Francisco Shock Soul Dynasty so two teams playing a well um, Shock obviously coming off that um, loss to the Outlaws but uh, I don't I mean I see them bouncing back in a pretty big way Soul has looked really nice they've won both of their matches with this um, with this different with their switched up lineups once again but I think San Francisco is going to come out with, like, f just fire in their eyes. And they're going to get off to a really nice start. They're going to crush the first couple maps. I think map three gets really competitive, but San Fran takes it. And then I think Seoul snags map four because San Francisco might let off the gas a little bit after um, after being, like, mega hyper-focused right away. Once they secure that 3-0, um, I think Seoul might be able to snag the last map, and especially because it is Havana. Um but yeah, I think San Francisco is a better team. Just overall, we've seen that the last stage, stage and a half. Um, and while Dynasty have looked really good, um, they haven't beaten the best competition quite yet. And um, I need to see more from this new lineup that they that they have before I can pick them over a team such as the San Fran Shock. Next, we got Florida Mayhem back in action. They're looking for win number two. They are taking on the Paris Eternal, who are coming off of a loss, but are still 2-1 on the stage. So this is a nice opportunity for Paris to get that eighth win. Um, kind of maybe create this little bit of separation between them and those um, bottom teams. Looking at maps, I mean, Nepal, Horizon Lunar Colony, Numbani, and then Havana. 
I'm going to take Paris here. I still think that their understanding of goats is a lot better. Um, they switched to, I think I mentioned this last time, but they switched their, um, they, they swapped out Shadowburn and Soon for um, Danye and Nico, who, or Nikodo, um, who have played a lot more goats because they were in contenders for seasons. Um, so I think that makes sense, and they have looked better since then. Um, Florida's still kind of learning the ropes, but this is there is an opportunity for Florida here. This, this is your X factor because Florida has played Sombra pretty well, and Paris has struggled at times pretty mightily against Sombra goats. Um, so we will see how that goes. Also, a couple of these maps, um, especially the last two, uh, we've seen a couple of weird things on some of the Nepal maps as well. Um, there are opportunities for Florida to run some DPS if they really want to, and um, that could give Paris some trouble. If Paris fields this lineup, they're not quite as skilled on DPS as Soon and Shadowburn are. So there is upset potential here, but I think Paris is able to kind of shut down the Sombra at least after a while. They take this one 3-1. to one. Next, Philadelphia Fusion versus Boston Uprising. So, Philly coming off a 1-3 to three loss to the Gladiators. They're now 8-8. Eight and eight. How the mighty have fallen. Um, I mean, the stage, uh, the season one grand finalists, um, obviously they, they didn't win, but they got to the grand finals, which is highly impressive. Um, taking on Boston Uprising. Boston has been by far the most disappointing team of stage three. They've lost all three of their matches, minus 10 map differential. They've only won uh, one map the entire time, so... It's been a real rough going for them. They switched up their lineup for some reason. Like, they have their DPSs playing different. The, they, like, they swapped them on Brig and Zarya. They got different supports coming in every single map. It it honestly, to me, it looks like, like almost sabotaged by Boston. I wouldn't be shocked if um, if what they were going for is, to, here, we're going to play our we're gonna play our two backup supports, and they're going to play well, and then we can trade them or the starters for... Um, for like more money because that's what Boston has done. Like they did it with with Striker, with Gamsu, Note. Note was a trade, but they um they did still receive some extra money in that um in that trade. Um who else? They uh there went there went Neko, um who had a really good showing, who's now on Toronto. So they've there's a ton of turnover on this team. Um I wouldn't be surprised if they ship off a couple more players, especially Fusions. Fusions will get to a different organization, and um, hopefully it'll be really good for him because I do like Fusions a lot. Um, seems like a good dude, and a nice um, he'd be a nice player on any team because of his communication. But like I said, Boston is just looking pretty awful right now. I mean, Fusions had his head in his hands. It looked like Verge of Tears. After their last match, because they were a they were a top they were a top half team, like they were I would call them like right around ten maybe eleven, and now they look terrible. So it's been a head scratcher. I think Philly bounces back here. They looked better against Gladiators. Um, I think it was pretty obvious that Gladiators were just better, especially when it comes to goats. But um, but Philadelphia is not a terrible team. They just had a rough go of it in terms of schedule, and I think that they are better than Boston, especially at this point. Um, I don't think Boston bounces back here. Um, unless they just go straight back to their old lineup, then maybe they have a chance. But I'm going to say Philly takes this one 3-1. to one. And the final match of the week, we got the Washington Justice taking on the LA Gladiators. So looking at maps, you got Nepal, you got Horizon Lunar Colony, Numbani, and then Havana. Uh, this looks like a 4-0 to me. Um, I think Gladiators are a much better team. Gladiators also have a very rough schedule moving forward for the rest of the stage. They got a rematch with Vancouver coming up. They have a match with Shanghai on the way. And um, they need all the wins they can get. And this is obviously quite a winnable game for them. It's the number 4 team in the league going up against the number 19 team in the league. So I don't think the Gladiators will uh, really let up in this match. I don't think they're going to look past Washington. Um, we've seen 
we've seen the mentality with gladiators the one map mentality like that they they don't worry if they're down 0-2 they don't worry about they're up 2-0 they're just focusing on each individual map and I think that um, that's not just talk. I don't think that's just BS from the coaches. I think that they really have implemented it, and all the players think that way, um, just by the way that they play. So I think that Gladiators pretty much roll them over. I don't think they kind of lollygag around. Well, maybe they will in the fourth map, because the Gladiators do not know how to 4 people. Um, and some wacky stuff can come out on Havana, so maybe Washington has a shot there. But I'm gonna say the Gladiators take all four of these because they know you gotta they gotta bump that map uh, map differential as much as they possibly can. They're re um, they're they have the same overall record, and their map differential is one better than the Spitfire right now. So those two are super close in the standings. They're going to want to get a 4-0 here, and I do think they get a 4-0 here. I can't say enough about the switch from um, Hydration to Surefor on the Brigida. I think it's already paid dividends, and I think it will continue to show moving forward um, in this stage. And, um, yeah, I got Gladiators moving to 3-1 on the stage. Unfortunately for Justice, it would be another loss. So, let me know what you guys think. Um... You got any other upsets? I like I said, I pretty much picked one. Um, do you think that there is potential for some of these, like Washington upsetting either Hanjo or or the Glads? Do you think um, Florida takes down Paris? Um, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, also, let me know if you think more teams should start running the DPS comps because it has worked for Houston. Let me know your thoughts on that. Um, thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful couple of days, and I'll see you in the next one.